let's open the HDR Light Studio connection panel. Go to plugins and select HDR Light Studio C4D connection. The panel opens. Let's dock it in the interface. To start with, make sure that the correct renderer is selected at the top of the panel. In this case, we are using Octane. Next, we will create a lighting environment set up for the chosen renderer. We'll press Add Pre-built Hook. In the Objects panel, there is a new HDR Light Studio Octane object, and within this is the HDR Light Studio environment set up for the chosen renderer. We're now ready to start. Press the Start button. Your interface should look something like this. If not, go to Window, Layout, Load, Default, Cinema 4D. If we move to the side and select the environment and look at the image texture, we can see that the environment is now using a temporary file provided by HDR Light Studio. This will change every time the lighting changes in HDR Light Studio and will keep Cinema 4D up to date with the latest lighting design. Let's go back to HDR Light Studio and fill our interface with it. OK, you can see there are two render views now in HDR Light Studio. We will use this one first. Let's press play. OK. In the render view, we have started interactive rendering in Cinema 4D. The resulting image is shown within the HDR Light Studio interface. If we make a change to the lighting, for example, this background and change the brightness, this map updates in Cinema 4D and the interactive render updates. So now we have live interactive feedback in this view. Let's change to the presets tab here and select a light. We'll drag this and drop this onto the view. We can see a new light has been created and added to the HDRI map. It has been positioned to reflect where we dropped it on the model. This is because the light paint mode was set to reflection, the default. If I click on the model in another location, the light will move to reflect in that location. This is because by default in the view, the light paint tool is selected. Just click on the model to move the light. If this view was slow because it was a very complicated scene, you can use HDR Light Studio's inbuilt renderer. Press play and import. By default, this will mean that Cinema 4D exports its scene as a temporary Alembic file, which is loaded and rendered in this view. OK, let's just adjust the shader in our own view. We can click in this view to position the light. This updates really quickly. We can use this view to click and drag on the model to discover lighting sweet spots. Once we let go, the updated map is sent to Cinema 4D and the interactive view will update. So if this render view is really slow, we can use the pause and resume render button here and use it to produce test renders whilst we interactively light the shots over here. So far, all the lighting is coming from the HDRI map. With a single setting, we can change this light into a 3D area light in Cinema 4D. I'll enable this setting. This view doesn't change much, but the map that is shared with the render view in Cinema 4D doesn't include this light anymore. This light is now a 3D light that can be moved in space using the smart dolly slider to control its distance. We can still control the light by clicking on the model to position it. I can easily duplicate this light and click 
to position a second light and of course change its size and its brightness or its colour like any other light. If we look at the Cinema 4D interface we can see these lights have been made in 3D space here. If we look at the objects we can see these two lights are listed here and each one has a shader set up with a texture that is coming from HDR Light Studio. So as we light in HDR Light Studio everything is kept in sync in the Cinema 4D scene. If we go back to HDR Light Studio any of these lights we can uncheck the area light checkbox and the light is returned to the HDRI map. These area lights will also be deleted in Cinema 4D and then the lighting is now coming simply from the HDRI map. If we look back at the Cinema 4D scene you can see that the area lights no longer exist. OK, so let's just position the lights that we have a little bit nicer. So let's say that we were happy with this lighting design we wanted to end the lighting session. Press the HDR button and then we can render the final high quality HDR content on disk. Choose a resolution for the HDRI map. If we had area lights select a resolution for those and we will browse and then let's save this as Cinema 4D new demo and press render. HDR Light Studio will now calculate the final high quality HDRI map and save it to disk. HDR Light Studio will then tell Cinema 4D to use these new files on disk. We minimize HDR Light Studio and look at this environment and the texture. It's now using that file from disk. At this point we can stop HDR Light Studio. This scene is now lit and is using files on disk as the textures. This is like any other Cinema 4D scene and it can now be rendered. If we decide we want to edit the lighting, simply press start and HDR Light Studio will restart. Its lighting project is embedded in the Cinema 4D scene. So when HDR Light Studio starts, it will load the project where we left off. If we press play again, we can see that the view is being lit with this lighting. We can make further changes. So let's say we change the color of one of these lights. And then if we're happy with this lighting, we press the HDR button again. Let's browse and give it a new name. save, render that again, minimize HDR Light Studio, press stop and if we look at the lighting environment it's now using that new file on disk. So that's the workflow of how to use HDR Light Studio with Cinema 4D. Thanks for watching.